let's design an interface for communicating over HTTP in JavaScript. But before we start writing code, let's get reacquainted with exactly what HTTP looks like. HTTP is a protocol for communication over the network. It provides the means for two parties to send and respond to messages. One party initiates by sending a request to the other party via their network address. The other party then sends a response back. In their simplest form, these messages are just strings of text formatted in a standardized way. You send a message, and then you get a message in response. I find this mental model useful when I'm evaluating the quality of programming interfaces. However, we can't forget that HTTP sits on top of other network protocols. So as long as these layers are handled well, we can get away with only thinking about simple text messages. But there's another wrinkle. There are three versions of HTTP in use today. The newer versions aim to improve performance and security. The network protocols they sit on top of are different, and their message formats are different. But the mental model still applies, and a good interface needn't expose these additional details. Now, with all of that in mind, let's write some code. First, we'll bootstrap a JavaScript project. I'll set private to true to indicate that this is not intended to be a published package. And then I'll set type to module to opt into ECMAScript modules. Next, I'll install some tooling. I'll configure a yarn uh, to manage packages. And then I will tell it to uh, use the node modules directory to keep in line with the behavior of other package managers. Um, next, I will configure a linter uh, just so my editor knows what to do about formatting. Enable prettier, set two spaces, disable semicolons. Let's start with checking out what Node.js has to offer in its standard library. Um, links to uh, documentation will be in the show notes. We can new up a server. And configure it with a strategy uh, for responding to requests. And for now, I'll just uh, configure it to always return 200.
I'll tell it to listen on a specific port. And then log when it's ready to go. Now, let's uh, run this and see where we're at. Ah, okay. And there we go. Now the code runs, but it definitely takes a few steps to do so. We're going to be uh, iterating on this code quite a bit, so I'd like to speed this process up. I'll do so by installing and configuring my test runner of choice. We're going to use this to automate the running of the code. Now, let's write a test for this code. Recall that to run this code, we went to the command line, used the node command to run server.js, we then waited for the text listening on 8080 to be printed to standard out. Only then were we able to run a curl command to send a request to that server. Uh, we saw the outputs, and then after we were done, we killed the server process. Now we're going to automate all of these same steps in JavaScript. Um, first, we will spawn a command. Um, then we will wait for some outputs. I have to tell Node.js to expect text outputs instead of binary. to actually make the rest of the code waits, I'll have to wrap this in a promise. Uh, now, after all of that work, we can send a request. and asserts uh, on the data and the response. Cool. Now let's, ah, before we run this, let's make sure to stop the server afterwards. Otherwise the test runner is just gonna hang. Now let's see if this runs. 
and it does. It was easy enough as a human to run the server in the terminal, uh, but running the server in JavaScript is much harder, taking about as much code to do so as it did to implement the server in the first place. If the actions of starting the server and waiting for the server to be started were translated better into idiomatic JavaScript, uh, perhaps we can arrive at a better interface. You know, maybe a, a function that returns a promise. Another problem with this code is that neither the ports nor the strategy for responding to requests are configurable. In the command line world, you know, perhaps an environment variable can be set for the ports, or the strategy can be configured by uh, passing in the path to a JavaScript file. In the JS world, you know, the port and strategy could probably be passed in as arguments to a function. Um, now, with all of that in mind, let's uh, see if we can improve on this code. First, let's assume we had a function for starting a server. This would eliminate the need to know how to spawn processes. To implement this, um, we can just move all of this implementation code into a function. Next, going top to bottom, let's suppose we had a function for stopping the server. I'd have to tell it which server to stop, so start server needs to return something I can pass into stop server. Now, this can also be designed as an instance method on the server object, but I'm just choosing to make it a f an ordinary function. And to implement this, I can export another function. Um, close is a method on Node's HTTP server that'll close, uh, close the ports after all connections uh, are closed. Uh, again, uh, documentation links will be in the show notes. And finally, I have to make start server return the server object. We've eliminated one more piece of information about processes, namely how to stop them. And uh, we're not quite there yet, uh, but I hope it's starting to become clear that we're also on the way to gaining the ability to manage multiple servers at the same time. Uh, next up is knowing when the server is uh, listening. And uh, instead of figuring out how to capture log outputs, uh, we can make start server return a promise. And we can implement it like so.
much easier. Um, now, we're already at the point where uh, this automated test actually runs. We've successfully eliminated all of the knowledge about spawning processes and have more or less converted this into a usable JavaScript interface. Um, now, the only thing that stops it from being useful is being able to configure the ports and the response strategy. Currently, all Start Server does is it starts an HTTP server that responds with Hello World to any request on port 8080. Um, and to make that configurable, we can have it take in a couple of arguments. Like so. And uh, for, for this first pass, uh, we can just take what's in the implementation and move it over. If I did that right, the test should still pass, and it does. Um, we'll return to this point later, uh, but notice how now we need some knowledge about how node requests and responses work. So we've leaked a little bit of information here. Um, but more on that later. Uh, also notice that we are now able to uh, start different servers on different ports that behave differently in parallel as well. What we've arrived at should look pretty similar to what Express and other Node HTTP frameworks provide. Um, the main difference amongst these different interfaces lie mainly in how you define response strategies. Uh, here, we have a response object that we call a couple of methods on. Um, Express is pretty similar. In Koa, there's a context object that we would mutate. Um, in Fastify, we would return whatever we want and then configure the framework, you know, telling it how to convert it into a response. Um, all of these strategies, though, all of these interfaces, they, they kind of stray far from what HTTP actually looks like. And if we go back to the beginning of this video, HTTP requests and responses, all they are are strings of text sent back and forth. And so let's try to find an interface that recovers some of this simplicity. Um, but uh, before I propose a different interface, I'd like to get into writing some uh, automated tests for this response strategy in isolation. Um, seeing uh, test cases has been valuable so far for evaluating the usability of our interfaces. Um, uh, so first, I will install some tooling for uh, setting up spies and mocks. And 
then I will start another test case. The subject under test will be this simple handler here. Um, in order to exercise it, I need to pass in two arguments, uh, which I can have this library provide. Then I can pass it in. Cool. So as for assertions, I can verify that right head and end were called with the right arguments. to tell the uh, test runner that if we get past both of these assertions, we're good, I'll have to uh, tell it to pass, otherwise it'll fail. Cool, so let's see if this runs. Cool, and it does. Um, and so what I'd like to call out here is that um, Having to assert uh, that methods are called on a complex object, um, first of all, it's kind of hard to do so. It takes many lines of code to set up. Um, and secondly, um, within the interface for Node.js requests and responses, there are probably several ways to accomplish the same thing. And by only asserting on one of them, you know, th this test is probably pretty brittle. Um, to make this test robust, we would have to cover every possible way of returning 200 with Hello World. And that's just not feasible. Like, the, the, the root cause of this kind of awkwardness is just we've leaked too much of Node's native interface. Um, a simpler interface would both make it easier to write these tests and probably make the resulting test a lot more uh, stable and robust. So, what might that look like? Um, the strategy could take in a request string and return a response string. That would be a little bit annoying to work with because then if we'd wanted to get anything useful out of the request string, we would have to parse it. Um, a better format would be JSON. Take in a JSON request object and return a response object. Let's take a look at what that would look like. Pretty good. And now we get to get rid of these uh, method calls. And we also get to get rid 
of most of this code um, because using it to now looks like this. Um, we haven't been using uh, any information from a request object yet, but uh, for sake of demonstration, I'll just feed one in. So the unit test looks pretty good. How about um, the integration test? Well, kind of same thing, right? Because we copied this uh, strategy uh, into the second test to begin with. And so we can copy this back. And so, yeah, um, the test looks pretty good. We've eliminated the last remnants of uh, knowledge about Node's HTTP server interface. And now the only thing left is to implement this interface. Uh, let's take a look. And so before we call the strategy, we're going to have to um, creates this uh, request object. And again, all documentation will be uh, linked to in the show notes. For, for now, uh, I won't focus on implementing uh, the complete interface. Um, for brevity, I'll just stop at what will make these tests pass. So I'll leave the parsing of the body for later. And with this uh, response data object, I'll then need to uh, convert it into the right method calls for the node response object. And so to, to make the tests on the right pass, uh, I can get away with just doing Let's see if all of this passes. Cool, and they do. Now that we've improved the interface for responding to requests, let's take a look at sending requests. 
our response strategies are currently functions that take a request and return a response. The exact same interface can be used on the other side as well. Here's what that might look like. and the implementation. And uh, again, all uh, links to documentation will be in the show notes. Cool. Now let's see if that passes. It does. Now let's compare this with our unit test below. Notice that this unit test already reflects the same interface. Um, it's pretty interesting how now we have the exact same interface, you know, regardless of whether requests and responses are going over the network or not. Um, uh, to make it exactly the same, I'll change this into an async function. Put in the weights over here and rename this to send requests. Well, that's about wraps up this show. The uh, interface design decisions we went over here form the basis of my open source library, Passing Notes. There, I explore concepts like supporting more of HTTP 1.1 and 2 using the same interface, um, an interface for defining composable middleware, 
and generic middleware for use cases like serving static files, bundling a client-side application, communicating over remote procedure calls. Um, I also bake in some developer affordances like hot reloading and uh, self-signed certificates for working over TLS during development. Um, and also, I provide a means for, a suggested means for injecting adapters for performing side effects. Uh, check it out for more. Links will be in the show notes, and uh, there'll be more to come. <laughs>